today I'm coming to you live from my apartment uh, because I don't have to do anything outside this week. Uh, I'm preparing to go to Seoul next week and do street photography and make a video about that there. But this week uh, I wanted to go over something that I had been mentioning in previous videos uh, and realized that maybe you guys didn't understand and I needed to clarify for myself as well because I was a little confused about it and that is aperture. The idea of aperture is pretty simple where you I'll use this lens again this lens when it's wide open like this and you can see all the glass uh, it lets in the most light that makes total sense and when it's closed like this it lets in the least amount of light and that also makes sense but there's so much more to it than that that I didn't understand. For instance, why is it something is more blurry when you open up the glass all the way? And what is stopping down? And what is wide open or stopping up uh, for that matter? So I wanted to explore these some terminology. I wanted to explore the science behind some of this stuff and uh, bring it to you. So uh, let's get started. The first thing I want to talk to you about is the terminology of f-stop. f-stop, f means focal, and stop is where each one of the settings on the lens that opens and closes the diaphragm. So the diaphragm is the thing on the inside that moves, and there are these leaves in there that open and shut, allowing more light in or, or uh, less light in. And the way they come up with the numbers for these things is it is the focal length divided by the diameter of the lens. The focal length is from the front of the lens to the very back of the lens uh, where it meets the sensor of the camera. And the diameter is what you always see written on the lens itself. If it's a 50 millimeter lens or a 35 millimeter lens or a 70 millimeter lens, that's what's written on the front. And so you divide one by the other and that gives you um, your f-stop numbers. So for instance, if you had an 80 millimeter lens and you had the aperture set to 25 millimeters across, you would divide 80 by 25 and you would come up with 3.2 or something like that. And that would be your aperture setting. The idea is this. Every time you turn the aperture knob one full stop to the next full number, you lose half of your light. And that continues all the way down from f1.4 all the way to f22, where you have one, I don't know, one millionth of the light. I don't know what the number would be. But you would have a lot less light. And you have to compensate for that with shutter speed or ISO. But the reason people use f22 is because you get more in focus. And that was one of the things that I was really curious about. Why is something more in focus at f22 than uh, f5 or f1.4? That is the next thing that we'll take a look at. If you take a look at this image here, you see me in the picture with light beams coming out of me towards a camera lens. The camera lens takes those light beams and focuses them to a single point on an image sensor. There's only one point where those light beams will come into focus with that particular camera lens. And it's at that specific spot there on the image sensor. Now, take a look at this image. If you move the lens or the person or the sensor to a different location, then the image doesn't come to a point on the sensor and you have an out of focus area and that appears as a circle, an out of focus circle. Uh, it's called a circle of confusion, but that's just a confusing term. So we'll just call it the out of focus circle. And you can see the size of the circle in this particular image here for this particular lens when the light is coming through the entire lens. But take a look at what happens when we stop down the aperture just a little bit. When we close it off and we go from f1.4 to f5.6 or something like that, uh, we see that the light beam coming into the image sensor uh, still hits it at the same spot, but 
what happens to the out of focus area is that it actually goes inside the original circle. That circle you see there is still the original circle from the original illustration. I left it there to show you that the light beams from a stop down lens show a narrower angle. Look what happens when we shut down the camera lens all the way to f18 or f22. Now the line of light coming through the lens is much more narrow than it was before and that means that the circle that you would see, the out of focus circle, is now much much smaller. That original circle is still there and you can see how big it was compared to what's there now or what would be there now. And that is the difference between f1.8 uh, or 1.4 and f18 or f22. Here you can see the camera lens is set to f1.7 and everything is blurry except for the exercise equipment that's in the very front of the uh, picture. On the left hand side you'll notice that there are some small circles that are blurry. That is the circle that I was telling you about, the blurriness of it. That is the size of the blur at 1.7. There, did you see that? That small change was me going from f1.7 to f2.8 and everything looks a little bit less blurry. There's nothing in focus yet other than what was in focus before, but if you look on the left hand side, the, the little spark of light now has a smaller circle than it did before. And here now we see the smaller circle still on that left hand side. We're at f4 right now. Now we're at f5.6 and things are starting to look much more clear in the, rest, in the whole picture. Uh, but the spark on the left hand side, that little flashing light, is very small now. That little circle, the circle that we were talking about before, is a lot smaller. And now we've changed one more time down to f8. And f8 here shows a smaller circle still. And everything is becoming more and more in focus. F11, also, everything here is more focused and in fact much of it would be considered acceptable uh, in a photograph. That blur that was from the very beginning with the wide open aperture is, all, is gone now. And then we hit F18 and you see here almost everything looks to be reasonably in focus. And the final stop on this focus train is f-stop 22, where the aperture is closed as far down as it will go. And here, almost everything is in focus. Not super in focus, and of course, only the very front, the same part that was in focus before, is still in focus. Everything's a little bit out of focus, but it's closer. Okay, so that's a simple primer on apertures. How they open up, why they open up, and what the effect of them is on the image that you're trying to capture. If you want to capture uh, an image that's in focus in one small area, then you would have the aperture opened up wide, allowing as much light in as possible. If you wanted more to be in focus, then you would stop down the aperture to f11 or 18 or 22 or, or something like that. Uh, you have to keep in mind that even with f22, only one little spot is going to be perfectly in focus and everything else will be mildly out of focus. But as you saw from the illustration that I showed you uh, a little while ago, that circle uh, of confusion, that circle of uh, out of focus area is much, much smaller. And so you might not even notice it depending on how close you're looking or whether it's a print on a piece of paper or whether it's on a small digital image. So hopefully this has been informative for you. I hope you learned something. Uh, hope, I think I learned something. I learned the, about the science behind how apertures work. And uh, I hope you guys have a fantastic day. I will see you guys next week live from, well, I won't be live, but I'll be in Seoul. Uh, and I'll be uh, making a video on street photography there. Until then, guys, have fun. I'll see you later. Bye.